How to get a startup business loan with bad credit? Yes, it can be done. And I'll be giving away all my tricks to making this happen. I'm going through every step I use to help others get a startup business loan even when they have bad personal credit. By the end of this video, you will know exactly what you need to do to get that business loan. And the great thing about this is you can do this over and over again. Just keep in mind that there is an order to all these steps and if you miss one, you may not qualify for that business loan. So watch the video all the way through to make sure you don't miss something important. Hello and welcome to the Income Series. I'm Brian Clark. I used to be a nurse anesthetist, a career I left after starting several online businesses. Now I come on YouTube to share how I achieved financial independence and what I learned from starting my businesses. I put a lot of work into this video, so if you're not against hitting that like button, go ahead and give it a tap. Also, if you're interested in building businesses and personal finance, you'll want to subscribe. That's the bread and butter of this channel, and I always try and make sure to provide insights that you can't find other places. Now, if you're wanting to get a business loan for your startup, but you have bad personal credit, the methods I use are not all that different compared to someone who has good personal credit, but there are a few restrictions. But don't worry, I'll be sharing what those restrictions are and how we can get past them. Now, just as a foundation, everything will come down to separating your own personal assets and the trade lines from those of your business. So let's get started with those initial steps. Now, your personal credit is tied to your individual identity. The major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion use self-identifying information, such as your name, phone number, address, and in particular, your social security number, to tie trade lines back to you. This is why companies that provide credit will generally request this type of information from you when you first apply. It's so they can run a credit check prior to giving you a trade line. Well, what if all identifying information for your business was completely different than your personal information? And that's what I'll be going over. Establishing your business means your business takes on an identity all its own. And this really isn't that difficult. I'll be sharing exactly how to get this done. Now, to build an individual identity for your business, the first thing you need to do is register it with the state. Each state is a little different in how you do this, but in general, you can do this on their state website in around 15 minutes. Now, while you can complete this side of the process quickly, you'll find that some states are fast to provide you with the approved official paperwork called Articles of Incorporation and some take a couple weeks to mail them to you. Now, once you've registered your business with the state, you'll then need to apply for an employer identification number or EIN with the IRS. And it's this EIN that gives your company its own identity. So you personally will have your social security number that is associated with your identity and then your business will have its employer identification number that's associated with its identity. They are now both separate. Okay, great, so that's the first step. You will now have to work on building some credit history for this new business with this new identity so your business can qualify for that business loan. Now, the next thing you'll want to do is essentially let the business credit bureaus know you exist. Your company is the new kid on the block and since it doesn't have any credit or payment history, you'll need to let them know you exist. Now, there are three main business credit bureaus and these are different from the personal credit bureaus. The main business credit bureau is called Dun & Bradstreet. They are by far the largest and most commonly used for evaluating business credit. The other two that deserve mentioning are Equifax Business and Experian Business. Now, since Dun & Bradstreet is the largest and most used, you generally just need to focus on building your business credit with them. So go to their website and build an account for your business. This doesn't take too long and at the end of it, you'll receive what's called a Dun's number. The Dunn's number essentially ties right into your business credit history with Dun & Bradstreet. Great, that was step number two. Really not that bad, right? Okay, let's move on to the next step, and that's opening a business bank account. When opening up a business bank account, I usually recommend using some of the mid-sized banks. You may want to avoid the top five largest banks because they often have high fees and offer low interest rates. It's worth it to shop around with some of the mid-sized banks and credit unions because they usually have a lot of money to offer small businesses. One of the things I found is new businesses will even sometimes be offered a line of credit with some of these smaller banks 
right when they create their checking account. And I'll try and have some recommendations for banks in the description of the video. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Now your business is not going to qualify for a significant business loan right away. You need to build up to that. So I'll be going over some of the trade lines you usually can get right away for your business. The first of these I wanna talk about is a secured business credit card. This is very similar to the secured credit cards they offer to people who are trying to build their personal credit. So with a secured business credit card, you will provide a deposit to the credit card company that will act as collateral to the credit line they give you and the size of the credit line will be equal to the size of the deposit you provide. So as an example, if you deposit $2,000, they will give you a $2,000 credit line. The beautiful thing about this type of credit card for your business is it does not require a personal guarantee because your deposit protects the credit company from any missed payments. Since you have bad personal credit, we will need to use as many methods as possible to build that business credit without having to provide a personal guarantee. Now, you'll still need to pay off the balance of this credit card every month, just like any other credit card. You don't want to be using the deposit to pay off your secured card. Otherwise, your credit line decreases. And I'll tell you, this is one of the best types of trade lines for your company, and you can literally apply for one as soon as you get your EIN and your DUNS number. Even if you don't have a huge amount of money for a deposit, I would still try and get one of these right away to start building business credit. Okay, let's move on to the next step, and that's building a merchant account with an online payment provider. As a business, you should be receiving payment at some point for your goods or services, and payment providers will help you build credit while providing a professional method for receiving payments. Not only that, but certain payment processors like PayPal, Stripe, and Square offer business loans to their business clients. As your payment processor, they will see exactly how much money you have coming into your business. So it is easy for them to evaluate how much of a loan you will qualify for. Once you have a consistent amount of income coming into your business, these payment processors will often offer you a loan and they will take scheduled payments automatically from the sales you make. The other big thing about this is you can automate the transfer of your money from the payment processor into your business bank account. So you're essentially building payment history in both places at the same time. So up till now, we talked about general setup of the business and also mentioned one of the fastest and easiest ways to get a form of business credit right away. Now, we will start talking about other forms of business lines of credit that will help you work towards getting a business loan that does not require a personal guarantee. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, another type of business credit you can start out with is what's called vendor credit. There are vendors for all kinds of business products and that you'll likely need for your business. So let's say you sell products on eBay. You can purchase the packaging and shipping materials from these vendors. Or if you have a cleaning business, you can buy the cleaning supplies from these same vendors. And the vendors will commonly offer what's called vendor credit. This is where they will send you the supplies and then give you somewhere between say 30 to 90 days to pay. If you have 30 days to pay, it's called a net 30 account. If you have 60 days to pay, it's called a net 60 account and so on. Now, you'll need to apply for the vendor credit with these companies, but it's usually just a matter of giving them the details of your business, your EIN, and your DUNS number, and then you'll hopefully be offered some vendor credit, even as a new business without any credit history. I would say too, if you were wanting your business loan so you can make a large purchase from one of your vendors, you might be able to work something out right at this point in your credit building journey. Say you buy your products from a manufacturer that you sell. The manufacturer may very well provide you with a net 60 or net 90 account if you've proven you can sell the product you're having them make. Vendor credit does hold a lot of value when building business credit history, so definitely take advantage of this. Okay, let's move on to the next type of credit that will help you qualify for a business loan and that's in-store credit cards. Once you have a little basic credit history from your secured credit card or vendor credit, you'll likely be able to get an in-store business card with some of the larger big box stores. These are stores like Sam's Club, Costco, Lowe's, and Home Depot. These credit cards work like regular credit cards, but with a limitation that you can only use them in the store chain associated with them. One of the nice things about the Sam's Club in-store business credit card 
as it can also be used at Walmart since they are both owned by the same parent company. So this card in particular gives you some pretty significant flexibility. The great thing about these cards is they don't take a ton of credit history to qualify for. Now when you go to apply for the card, you need to make sure you have all your business information ready. I've seen these cards get denied to businesses that qualify for very small errors in the application. So you'll want to make sure you have the exact business name, address, phone number, EIN, and DUNS number that's legally registered with your business already. You'll also want to double check what the employee types into their computer before submitting the application. They're often the ones that create the error that gets your application denied. So ask that you double check what they type before submitting. Okay, if you get all this done, you should really be at the point where your company will have the credit history necessary to qualify for a business loan. This is the time where you can start to apply for business credit cards that don't have restrictions or require a personal guarantee. This is also the time that you can start looking for business loans to really grow your business. Now, the amount of loan the business qualifies for will depend heavily on your business's income and also what you're trying to purchase. There are also alternative forms of lending that can be considered as well. Say you're a home flipper and you rely on hard money loans to purchase properties. Well, much of the credit building process I mentioned can be sidestepped a bit if you can provide a large enough of a down payment on the house you're buying and assuming you're getting the property at a good deal. Buying something like a home to flip can often be easier to get financed than say recording equipment for a recording studio because a house generally holds its value and is relatively easier to liquidate. So just keep that in mind that much of getting a business loan depends on your industry and what you're trying to get funded just as much as proven revenue and credit history. That's why every business credit building strategy needs to be customized a bit for each business that is trying to qualify for a significant loan. What I shared with you today are extremely solid principles regarding building an identity for your business and business credit history to increase your chances as much as possible. Essentially, any business owner will be able to use these and be better off for it. If you're not against hitting that like button, Go ahead and smash it for me. I really work hard to bring you useful business content. Also, if you like videos on how to build businesses and really build wealth, then you'll want to click subscribe. It's free to do and it's definitely worth it. If you're kind of in that stage of bootstrapping your business, I definitely feel where you're coming from. Managing business finances really are a big part of making any startup business a success. One of the things I do want to warn you about is taking out a business loan on a startup is not always the best idea. If you're getting a loan to buy more product from a supplier to keep up with existing demand, that is great. But if you're say building out a cafe and you want the cash for renovations, you need to anticipate delays. And you need to anticipate that you'll need to start making payments on that business loan starting from day one. Most people don't account for repayment of the business loan into their initial business plan. They also often don't take into account common delays that can affect their revenue. You should have this mapped out before you apply for a business loan. And I say this because I want your business to be successful. I want you to go into borrowing money with your eyes wide open and prepared for any situation that may occur. I hope this video was helpful and as always, you guys have a great day.